I have brought my class today, and we're called His Hands. Uh, you'll find out why we're called His Hands in a couple of minutes. Um, this year, our class verse came from Jeremiah. And Jeremiah says, For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. They've been out of school and they still know it. And we, we have taken that very seriously this year because we all realize through our study together that God had a plan a long time ago for us to be here today. God had a plan. I told, I told Kathy I was going to cry. Um, okay, go ahead. We do that here. Um, God had a plan in 2009. I was still teaching in public school ready to retire, um, but could not financially retire at that point. And my church, Vince Baptist Church, put a bug in our ear saying that they were going to start a school. Well, if you know anything about Mince Baptist Church, we are out in the middle of nowhere, kind of like here. <laughs> and we're a small church, and a lot of people doubt it. But whenever the preacher asked me to be on the first school committee to do the planning, I said yes. Because at that time, I knew that my plan was to retire and come to Mintz to, to teach. Well, it took off. We had a school. I got to meet Dr. White in 2009 because I was down there um, helping Miss Joy, who was the principal at that time, do a few things, looking at some children because my uh, degree is in special ed, in exceptional children. And she wanted me to help her out with a couple of children. And the first time I was down there, I was hooked, and I kept saying, I've got to retire. I've got to go there. I've got to retire. Not because it was my church, but because that was my plan. Well, God did not see it quite that way. Because I continued to teach public school until 2012. At that point, I knew it was time. God said, he gave me a sign. He gave me a true sign. And I retired. Um, my plan? Go home. Sit at home, watch the soap operas, do what I wanted to do. <laughs> well, when Miss Joy called me and said, could you come sub one day? I said, well... I guess so. So I did. The class that she had me subbing in was Jake's first grade class. <laughs> <laughs> and he still loves me more than refried beans in Milky Way. <laughs> but it was that class that I got to, to sub in. And there were certain personalities in that class that I just fell in love with. So when fall rolled around, this was in February, about July I got a phone call from my preacher, Dr. McBride, and he said, uh, you need to come put in an application to teach this fall. I said, that's not my plan. <laughs> he said, I don't care what your plan is, you need to think about God's plan. Well, you know, how do you say mm -mm to that? <laughs> so I put in an application the same day I was interviewed and the same day I was hired nice. um, to teach Jake's class. And that was not an accident. God had that plan for me to start that with that class. That class graduated this year. And I was tore all to pieces uh -huh. because that was my first class at Mintz Christian Academy. But every year at the end of the year, I would go to the principal, and we had a few. I would say, but what about the exceptional children? We're not serving them. What about them? And every year I was told, we don't have that in our budget. Well, it was still my plan. I kept pushing and pushing. I taught second grade, third grade, second, third grade, third, fourth grade, third grade, third, third grade, third grade, third grade. Anyway, taught a long time. And I went to, Dr. to Mr. Workman and I said, 
if you don't start an exceptional children program, I'm going to the house. He said, well, I don't know. Not knowing the whole time it was in God's plan because the children that I am with now, they were the ones that needed me. I needed them. And it was God's plan that was fulfilled because he gave me six of the most precious children in the world. Not saying that Jake was not precious because he is. <laughs> but these children and I and their parents have a special connection. I will be with them until God calls one of us home or I do have to retire. And that is a have to retire. Um, so I am just so thankful that I get to do this every day. We are now on our 10th stop, I think it is, on our Goodness of God tour. We have been to 10 different places doing our little thing that we're going to do today. And the number of people that have seen me later saying, you just don't know what that meant to me. Because each of these little children, just like we all, have some things that we don't do very well sometimes. We have some anxiety. We have some fears. Because many years ago, I'd have been scared to death to stand up here right now. I would have never done it. But if you've ever been to any of our dinner theaters, you've seen me do some crazy things. <laughs> but I try to carry that enthusiasm and that love for God into my classroom every day. And we do have a good time, don't we? Mm, yes, we do. We have a good time. We, and we get to experience God every single day. And I'm so thankful that God led me to, this, to that place at this time in my life because I start 43 years in the fall. I'm aiming for 50. <sighs> And if my babies have, and I call them my babies even though some of them are a kid, um, if I have to drive to school and they have to come out with a wheelchair to get me <laughs> and push me in, I plan to stay as long as I can, as long as they will let me. <laughs> will you let me stay? Yeah. I, I hope so. <laughs> because they are now part of my heart. Mm -hmm. And my heart has always been with children who needed that little bit of extra something. So I just pray that every day I can give them that extra something that they need because they definitely give me that something that I need. And I just want us to remember that God has a plan for all of us. God has a plan. Just like I told the gentleman in the back as I walked in, I told him, God has a plan, right. knowing what I was going to say when I got up here, but not knowing that you were going to greet me when I walked in the door. God has a plan and a reason for everything. And our job is just to have faith and to go with God, and he's going to take care of the rest. Right. So that's all I've got to say. Would any of you like to say anything? No? Okay, well, come on up, and we're going to show you what we're going to do. the goodness of God. 
If you'll notice on the back, thank you so much. Let's give them a little more hand. Thank you so much. If you'll notice on the back of your worship brochure, we have a, two social media accounts, and we also have a YouTube page. Today's service is being recorded, and it'll be dumped to YouTube later, and you can just follow the instructions on the back. And that's how you can find and like and share and send the presentation. And the baptism will be recorded today. 
for all of us to have that. Also, you'll notice one of our children, Sarah Beth is her name. She's walking around. You know, when you have four, you kind of forget what their names are. Uh, after you have three, you, jo- you argue who's going to go get the fourth one out of the car. Anybody been there? Um, some of you don't believe me. Um, she'll be taking photos of your loved ones as they worship in baptism today. And we're going to send them out electronically as well for uh, all the families to have access to those. But in just a moment, I'm going to dismiss. As a matter of fact, those that are being, uh, due to the restraints of time, I don't want to rush to baptism. Those that are being baptized, if you will exit to the my right, your left, and go ahead and get changed. If you'd like to change and be, get prepared, I'm going to lay the foundation for baptism. And then we will worship together in baptism after the deacons and others help serve moving the tables and the lectern. The act of water baptism is very important. It is the first, one of the first steps in the life of a Christian. In Matthew 3, Jesus comes to his cousin John to be baptized and to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus then went on to baptize baptism, excuse me, ordained baptism as an eternal ordinance for his church calling every believer to follow in his footsteps, not as a suggestion, but as a commandment. Most Westerners take baptism for granted because for many people in the world, water baptism requires incredible courage. In countries like Nepal, it once meant imprisonment for the Soviets or the Chinese or Eastern European believers. It's like signing your own death warrant. That is true still today, especially in Muslim countries, when if you convert to Christianity, you are at least ostracized and sometimes killed just for being baptized. As a wedding ring is an outward symbol, as communion is a symbol, as a military uniform is a symbol, water baptism is a symbol designed by God to identify a person as a disciple of Christ Jesus. But yet it is so much more. Baptism in water is an outward representation of an inward reality. Water baptism, in essence, is a funeral to the old self. It is an act of faith in which we testify both to God and to the world that the person we were before is dead and buried in water. And we are raised as a new creation in Christ. Being baptized is a command from God and not an option. It is an act that requires every believer to participate. Water baptism is a very important reminder of the wonderful grace of God. It says the person we once were before sin is dead, and we are raised in Jesus Christ as a new creation, and we strive to live a life that pleases Him. You have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain if you're a Christian by following Him in water. Ultimately, it all goes back to Jesus' statement in John 14, 15, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. For baptism is simple, but it's profound at the same time as an act of obedience that you will carry with you the rest of your life. If you've not taken the step of water baptism, you need to do so as soon as possible. But you also need to embrace the reality that to be baptized and not convert to Christianity first means you're just a wet sinner. If you are a Christian, you should be baptized. Baptizing does not save you. It is an outward expression of an inward work that the Holy Spirit has done through you, and all believers should do so if they can at all possible. And if you don't feel like you can get in the tub, I will break a bucket of water and I'll baptize you over the side of something. I, we, I will help you get there. If you know someone who wants to be baptized, we'll make that happen in any way we can. The baptistry is right behind me in the floor. You're going to see, and in our faith tradition, if you'd like to be baptized again because you've rededicated your life but you'd like to do it again, that is totally acceptable in our faith tradition, and you can come see me now that you've seen it happen, and we can worship together the next time we do baptism. So Miss Winnie and Miss Kathy are going to help lead us in some worship. The gentlemen are going to help move the pulpit and the other furniture. Worship with them as we prepare to enter the baptistry. You are welcome to sing with us. I'm going to forget PK because he didn't say and Grant. So... sing with us. The words will be on the screen. I 
I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend, cause the God on the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing Better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. I like this part. Let's stand and sing this last part. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn homes into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. be seated. At this time, I'd like for you to welcome Courtney Faith Hope. Courtney has made a public profession of faith that Jesus Christ is her personal Lord and Savior and wishes to be baptized in water as a part of her public profession of faith. Courtney, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior in front of all these witnesses? Yes. Is there anything you'd like to say? I, I got saved three years ago at my first accelerant, and I always felt like I wasn't ready to be baptized but a couple weeks ago, PK talked something about, like, when Jesus comes, are you ready to go to heaven or hell? And I realized it wasn't, there wasn't any time to wait anymore. Amen. Amen. Some of the kids call me PK, short for Pastor Ken, if you're wondering who she's talking about. Um, so if you'll step in front of me, Courtney.
Welcome Danny Holloman. Stand beside me, Danny. He took his hearing aids out so he could be baptized, okay? So, y'all, we're going to worship together, okay? Danny, you've made a public profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. Is that correct? Yes. And you would like to be baptized in water? Yes. Is there anything you'd like to say? Y'all need to do this. <laughs> Amen. Welcome, Allison Beth Lucas. Woo. You may recognize Allison as part of his hands. Didn't they do a great job today? <laughs> Allison, you've made a public profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. Is that correct? And you'd like to be baptized in water as an outward expression of your faith? Yes, sir. Is there anything you'd like to say? No, sir. I'm going in alphabetical order just in case you haven't noticed. Welcome, Linda Winter. <laughs> Miss Linda, you've made a public profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. Is that correct? Yes. And you'd like to be baptized in water today? Is there anything you'd like to say? Y'all just need to come and do this and listen to the Lord because I tell you, he told, he reminded me this morning that I needed to do this um, as a rededication to him. I was baptized when I was 13 years old and um, through circumstances of life, he made it possible for me to do this again today, but I almost didn't do it because um, my family's not here, my husband's on the truck and... Let's just say I was having a pity party, and the Lord says, get up out of that bed and come do this, girl, because you're the only, I am the only thing you need. Amen. Her husband, Mr. Brian, is an over-the-road trucker, so he's not able to join us today. But when she walked in with her baptism clothes, she said, he can watch it on the video. Um, and your, your, your immediate family might not be here, but your church family's here. Amen. heard the testimonies if you've not done it or you need to redo it I need to see you as soon as possible if you've never seen us do it before in the floor now you have so you know what to expect Jesus words are pretty clear be baptized be baptized and follow his commands thank you so much for coming to worship with us today make sure you follow us and like us on social media so you can get this service to share and send to your loved ones shake hands with two or three people and say good gracious it was good to see you i hope to see you wednesday night for our free fellowship meal at 6 30 and andy griffith dvd bible study you're dismissed